There's an outside to the building and there's an inside to the building. The reason we build a building is because we want to be inside a condition space and not outside. So we want to gain some type of control. All right, good morning. So what are we doing today? I thought we'd take this opportunity to review some details that I drew up for Matt's uh, remodeling new construction project that he's undertaking here. Um, we're going to start by looking at some existing details and talking about some of the problems with those details and then how I provided a solution for the problems that we're going to um, talk about here. So let's get started. So you can see here on these two details here, this is pretty typical, you know, 60s, 70s construction in Texas. Slab on grade, whether it's turned down slab, three, three poor, whatever. But the reality is, is you have this concrete slab system. You have a wall system coming down, sitting on top of it. There's a whole bunch of problems with this. One, we have this large thermal break that moves through here. We have air leakage that happens underneath the sill happening here. So we, we really don't have much control over this detail. Um, down here where the wall meets the slab. At the top of the wall here, it's a vented roof assembly. You can see there that it's beginning to work, but air is pretty stupid in that it doesn't understand that it should go above the insulation. And a lot of times that air will come up and it'll go into the insulation. And what does that do? Well, it just suggests that this area of the insulation now becomes much colder than this area of the insulation because we have that air permeance in that insulation in the attic so that that cold air can just migrate in there or in the summertime it's that hot humid air can migrate in there. And again, we don't have much for air leakage details here, stopping air through going through this system here. There's no insulation across the wall here. So how do we solve all these problems? Well, let's talk about in, in order of importance. W one of the things that's really important to try and understand when you're developing details for a remodeling project or a new project is, is that you have to have a certain discipline in how you arrive at making decisions, right? So basically a set of rules. And one of the things that I think the industry really lacks is having the ability to make appropriate decisions for certain details and what's important, what's not, how to prioritize those decisions. All of these things play a major role in how we develop details that actually work. So let's talk about what are my four priorities, right? So I look at them as the control layers because as I describe these problems, the one thing that all of these problems basically outline is our lack of control in the building, right? So there's an outside to the building and there's an inside to the building. The reason we build a building is because we want to be inside a condition space and not outside. So we want to gain some type of control. Well, in the older houses like this one built in the 70s, one of the problems is, is you have kind of control, but you don't have real control on the inside space, meaning you can go in there, you can heat it, you can cool it. It's a different environment that is, than it is outside. But the reality is, is that I really don't have control unless I throw a lot of money at this house in terms of energy, right? And putting it in there. And I don't have the control of having that cold air just kind of coming in freely into the house. And, and while some of you might sit there and say, okay, it's, it's an energy bill, I get that whole energy efficiency. Well, there's other pieces to this too, right? If I, if I come in here and I don't battle air leakage, and in this room I have carpet, right? Well, that carpet, where's the least likely place for that carpet to get cleaned? It's probably in this corner, right? So here we have a corner that very rarely gets cleaned and we have a nice stream of air coming in here. Well, guess what that carpet does? That becomes the filtration device for that airstream coming inside the house, right? So what do I have here? I don't have necessarily an energy efficiency problem. I have a health problem because now I'm collecting dust and dirt and all these things in the fabric of my carpet that's working as the basic air filter for the house. Why? Because I don't have control. So let's talk about control. How do I gain control? I need this series of priorities. Well, it's pretty simple. 
we develop a list of what we call control layers. Right? Control layers are simply water, air, vapor, and thermal. And notice I distinctly place them in order one through four, meaning that one is the highest priority, four being the lowest priority, right? Water, number one killer of buildings. A lot of you that have followed me on Instagram or um, throughout some other videos would understand that the idea of water and killer of buildings, if it don't last, it don't matter, right? I can have the most superbly insulated structure in the nation. But if I don't have proper water management, what good is it if I'm putting that building in a dumpster in 20 years or 30 years, right? So remind yourself, if it don't last, it doesn't matter. So we need to battle water. We need to solve for water first. We need to solve for air second, the airstream. Now, airstream takes on a couple of hats. One, it takes on just the pure energy efficiency of the air that I paid to heat or cool inside the house has the ability to leave the house un through an uncontrolled mechanism, holes in the wall, um, improper flashings, et cetera, et cetera. The air can also transport moisture. If I have an airstream that's moving across my wall, then that airstream now can carry a certain level of moisture content. And if that moisture content hits a cold surface, say the inside face of exterior sheathing, and I don't have the ability to dry that, then I get a moisture problem. Or basically condensing the vapor, and guess what? My number two problem now becomes a number one problem. And I go right back to that air problem becoming a water problem. So I really want to control air. They kind of somewhat linked. Um, Three, vapor. Vapor is probably one of the easier ones to control because I really don't care about moisture in the vapor form. Moisture is going to move through my wall system in either direction as long as it has the ability to dry and I don't have impermeable layers in, the, in that wall system. If I do, I need to understand that I'm not trapping the wall, right? The worst thing that I could do is have some type of impermeable surface on the outside of the wall and have some type of impermeable surface on the inside of the wall where moisture can't get out of my wall, right? I'm going to think that, okay, maybe I'm not getting it in there, but you know what? Moisture has a funny way of getting to places where we don't want it. So we want to have that ability to dry. So it, it needs to dry in at least one direction, but man, it'd be nice if that wall was able to dry in both directions. And then that takes us to our last one, thermal. Thermal control layer is nothing more than putting a sweater or a jacket on the house, right? It's cold outside, we want to be warm, we put insulation in the walls, the inside stays warm, the outside is cold. In the summertime, when it's 100 degrees outside, we want to stay cool and we want to have the reverse, we want to be the refrigerator, we want to live inside the refrigerator, have it be nice and cool when it's nice and hot outside. So we need to create that barrier or layer of control so that we don't have the migration of heat. Heat always moves from hot to cold. So the outside in the summertime is trying to get inside. In the wintertime, our hot air is trying to get outside, right? The reason thermal is number four in our control layers is that it really doesn't pose a durability problem unless you get into a condensation issue. But for the most part, I always describe the thermal control layer as a financial equation. How much money, what type of insulation can I throw at the wall? The more insulation I throw at the wall, the more energy efficient the structure becomes. And that's loosely said, because it's not always true, but for the sake of our argument here and just discussing an overview of control layers, it proves to be pretty true, right? So thermal's number four. So when we look at this wall, again, now we're looking at it through these filters of the four control layers. Let's talk about those again. Water. How am I dealing with water here? Well, I don't want water to turn the corner and come under my slab, so I need to battle that. I need to get the water and get it away from my structure as fast as possible. The air leakage, we talked about that. Getting through the wall and sealing up that structure and gaining control on the inside. Now, a lot of you, <clears throat> watching this video might have heard that, well, maybe you don't want to seal up a house too tight, right? You don't, houses need to breathe. I've 
heard this for the last 27 years that I've been in the business. Um, you always hear, oh, houses need to breathe. You don't want to build them too tight. I say, and this is you know my opinion, if I can build a hot air balloon out of the house, that would make me happiest. Because these are called control layers. So the more control I get, the more things I can do, right? If I can virtually seal up a house, then I can dictate how much air comes into that house. I can dictate what I do to that air that enters the house. I can heat it, treat it, humidify it, dehumidify it. I can do whatever I want to do along its travels of bringing it into the house. I can also control the air, the bad air inside the house and get rid of it. Odor control, humidity control, bathrooms, kitchens, etc., and pure ventilation, right? We don't want to use that carpet as the filtration device, right? Here's a concept. Wow. Let's bring the air into a dedicated filter whose sole purpose is to scrub that air before you dump it into the house, right? What a concept, huh? Filtrated ventilation air inside a structure? I know, sounds crazy, sounds revolutionary, but we'll get there one of these days with all our houses. But so let's, let's move on and we'll talk about the solutions that I posed to these details. So this is that slab detail in a larger format. You can see we really don't have much to do with the slab. There's a big question mark of what's under the slab because we didn't cast that slab, so we don't have any knowledge. I think it's a pretty safe assumption to just say that that was backfilled and the slab was cast on top of that fill. We have a slight you know, dimensional change here of probably on the order of eight inches from grade to top of slab. But how do I deal with those control layers, right? So let's talk about water first, because water, again, number one killer of buildings, number one on my control layer list, right? What's the first thing that's gonna happen here? Well, water in the form of rain is gonna hit my siding. Well, what happens? Well, most of that water is just gonna follow the contour of the siding Notice that I have a little cavity here, so the water can't turn the corner, so it's forced to drip. Notice that the exterior grade is sloped, so that water will then run down the slope and run away from the structure, right? 